What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squid back in another video. So I have to tell you, this deck has absolutely been insane for me. This is a deck idea I've been testing. And as you can see, it is an absolute abomination, other known as Kashtira Chimera. So what we've done here is combine the best of both worlds. We have the Kashtira engine package that's a one card starter off any of these monsters as well as the chimera package which is also a one card starter as long as you have access to mirror sword knight which gives you basically like a plus five now how the chimera cards work for those of you guys that don't know is you basically fuse into a bunch of different chimeras and they each have effects when they're summoned for example the big wing burfamet allows you to add a copy of chimera fusion and a level four beast monster from your deck to your hand instant plus two when he's no more special summoned gazelle the king of mythical claws allows you to add a copy of chimera fusion from your deck to your hand or a level five fiend monster aka big wing burfamet when he's summoned and then you have mirror sword knight which can be attributed to summon any monster that mentions chimera fusion including big wing burfamet or gazelle and also Cornfield Kawato, which can be discarded to search any card that mentions Chimera Fusion, well, any monsters. So you have access essentially for any of these monsters, and essentially, as long as you have access to Mirror Sword Knight, you contribute it off to go into Big Wing Burfamet, add two cards, and then go Insta Plus into your new Chimera, the King of uh, Phantom Beasts, which discards a card during the end phase from your opponent or even Guardian Chimera, which is very easy to set up because when Chimera Fusion is used, it has an engrave effect where you can add it back to your hand on that same turn. Not to mention, this card is actually not once per turn for the actual fusion effect, which is nuts. There's nowhere where it says once per turn for that effect. It only says you can only use this effect of Chimera Fusion once per turn for the second effect, adding it from Grave. So you can keep using this, and how it typically works is you would set up Chimera the King of Mythical Beasts, to discard one card from your opponent's hand, add back Chimera Fusion, reset Chimera Fusion, and then on their turn during the main phase, you can actually make Guardian Chimera because Chimera Fusion is a quick play. And you can threaten their board by first using your cash tier cards, which they are forced to negate, and then go into your Chimera plays. Now, one thing to note is Big Wing Burfamet actually does lock you into fusion monsters when you use that effect, because obviously this effect's so busted that it has to have some sort of restriction. Now, the reason why this is so good is because you do not have to go into your XYZ plays for Cash Tira. Contrary to popular belief, you do not need a Rise Heart to win. In fact, just having Unicorn and Fenrir it can sometimes be enough to win. And when you go like Special Summon Fenrir, add a Unicorn, or Special Summon Unicorn, add a copy of Birth or Cash Teosis, you can go ahead and still use the effect of Burfamet, and then you're locked into Fusions, but that's fine because we can then bring out a Fenrir, search a copy of Unicorn for Recursion, and that's typically enough for you to protect your board. It provides you as a failsafe if any of these cards get Imperm, Ash, Valor, which really would typically hurt the regular Chimera deck. For example, Big Wing Performant got Valor or Imperm, or the Mirror Sword Knight got Ash, you would still have access to your cash tier resources to at least survive a turn, and then on the following turn, push back with your Chimera stuff. And I really like, especially the fact that you can play a lot of non-engine in this deck specifically. It kind of addresses the issues with cash tier where you would typically brick because the engine was so little and now that you have the chimera heavy plays you're probably not going to brick you're going to have access to one or the other and you're not also weak against other cards like book of moon or things that would typically end the turn of a cash tier player you don't have to play cards like forbidden lands which typically be like very almost streamlined where you have to have the monster in order to make it happen instead now we're playing a different engine that could just be used to play and further your plays when you get your cash tier monster stopped so it kind of addresses those two problems and on top of all that we can run a thin cash tier account i think the monster lineup is fine as is we have one copy of rise heart just to be able to go into the cash tier rise heart against matchups where it's good against like runix and then on top of that we're just playing two of each of these guys just to make the engine as shallow as possible but obviously maximizing on three of the ones that get us to the one card starter and on top of all of that we have 16 slots for non-engine so we can play three ash three Valor, two mourner two nib three book of moon which is especially good in this deck because you can chain it to the effect of big wing burfamet when they try to Valor or imperm therefore protecting your big wing burfamet so you can get the two cards and still fuse with it because it's face down so it kind of provides a fail safe in protection being offensively used as well as defensively when you can use it against your opponent's monsters like cash tiras or to prevent them from synchro summoning and then we have three copies of imperm that's a whopping 16 non-engine cards which i think is absolutely nuts and crucial in a format like this where you're reliant on stopping a lot of combo decks that are running rampant in the format which i think revolution synchron will actually cause a lot of people to be playing diverse combo heavy decks like Vanadium, Tier Laments, 
even like decks that just rely on Re Revolution Synchron, I know some people are playing like ABC and stuff like that. This allows you to actually fight back. And then on your turn, all you need is one card to potentially break their entire board. If Mirror Sword Knight is resolving, you're going into Chimera the King and Phantom Beasts. You're going into Ch Guardian Chimera. You're potentially even OTKing with Chimera the Illusion Beast, which is a new monster that allows you to attack a number of times each material that was used for it. So you can use one or one illusion monster or more. So you can potentially use three or four and make it attack four times. And how it works is it has an effect like Ninja Shadow Mosquito where neither monster can be destroyed by a battle. And the, the end of the damage step, if this card battle a monster, you can make that opponent's monsters attack zero also negate its effect. So you can keep crashing and they take 31, 31, 31 on the consecutive hits. I'm gonna show you guys a replay after this, which is exactly what happened. Now, we are also playing two copies of uh, Pot of Desires. You guys can also experiment with Extravagance, but I thought Desires wouldn't really hurt this deck. We don't care if we're banishing these cast hero cards. We have the rest of our Chimera engine to continue playing. I think one of each cast hero card is good enough. One birth is good enough. We don't want to brick on these. This is exclusively what we want to search off of the Unicorn. Same with uh, Rathos. You could potentially think about playing more, but I, we just don't want to brick on these cards. We don't want to draw multiple of the cast heroes. We just want one cast tier card alongside our ca Chimera cards and then the other non-engine hand traps. I think Teosis is necessary for the times that you do open Unicorn, so you're still able to go into your combo. It does lock you into XYZ monsters, so just be aware when you're using that before you're using your Chimera plays, okay? And then I think that's fairly standard. I think the deck is really solid. I would encourage people to actually test it out because I think it definitely has legs. Side deck, fairly standard, just like Drone Lockbird. One thing about King Tiger Wanku is really cool. This is an old card that's level four beast, which can actually be searched off of Bing Wing Burfomet. And if you guys haven't seen my other Chimera video, what you can actually do going first off of one Mirror Sword Knight is you can set up a King Tiger Wanku because when King Tiger Wang, who is used as a fusion material, you search it off of Bing Bing Burfomet, you fuse on their turn, and then what Chimera the King Phantom Beast does in the graveyard is you can banish it from your graveyard to target one beast monster in your graveyard special summon it. So you can bring out the King Tiger Wang, who, which is crazy against decks like Purely, Sprite, any deck that has little weenie minions will get eaten by King Tiger Wang, who, and as long as he's on the board, any monster with 1400 or less attack that's normal or special gets popped instantly. So it's a really, really cool effect that basically is a walking floodgate that's searchable that I really, really like going first. Everything else is standard. I actually think Thrust is very good going second right now. It gives you the option to get Herald of the Abyss to deal with things like Purely X, Purely Noir. It gives you things like Darkhold to deal with Cast Tira. It gives you things like Harpy's Feather Duster to deal with Backroll decks. So it's a lot of fun. I think Barrier is also a given against decks like Purely, which will see a lot of play in this metagame. And then Extra Deck is fairly standard. We're playing twos of the Chimeras because we will be going into them. My Dragon of Swamp is interesting because you can actually use Chimera Fusion, if I'm not mistaken, to fuse using Fenrir and the Gazelle, for example, or the Cornfield Coatl and the Cascadia Unicorn. Essentially, a way to play around things like Imperm or Valor. You can chain the Chimera Fusion being a quick play from your hand to go into the Mud Dragon and then also call the attribute that you want to protect against. So you could call Dark and then go into your Big Wing Burfomet on the follow-up. So it's really, really nice. Um, I think it's warrants a spot for sure. Magnum the Reliever, this is a new card that requires one monster special summon the extra deck and one monster in the hand. It can actually allow you to draw a card by recycling your Chimera Fusions. The other effect is you can banish a Chimera Fusion from your graveyard to target a card on the field and pop it. Quick effect, which is also very, very nice is a potential interruption. Drago's Topelia, obvious reasons. We're going into a couple of darks like Chimera here to go into that. Baron of Flur, just in case you have a level three with the cash tiers and then the rest of the standard cash tier level seven lineup. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a quick replay from testing this deck and i have to say this deck is absolutely explosive it plays through a lot let's dive into the replay and take a look all right guys so as you can see here in this replay we lost the die roll our opponent's gonna go first and we are going to go ahead and play against a 45 card deck which is some kind of pile probably branded and sure enough it is a copy of branded or a variant rather our opponent's gonna go ahead and summon the keeper of dragon magic discarding book of moon adding branded fusion interesting that they would discard the book of moon activate branded fusion and yeah, you can see, okay, they're actually playing Predator Plants here. We can see their hand is pretty busted. Super Poly, Cross Out Dexnator as well. And then they're going to go ahead and brand Infusion into Albion. We, our hand is actually quite nice. We have multiple three cards from the Chimera Engine and then the Rathos for the Cash Tier and the Book of Moon. Normally, I would think that this is kind of scary because we don't have a lot of non engine, but the fact of the matter is the Chimera stuff actually plays through a lot. And you guys are going to see this demonstration on my following turn. So they're going to go ahead, standard play here with the Albion going into the Lubellion. Then they're going to go off the effect of Biblis to uh, add a card, discard the Darling Tolian Cobra as cost off Lubellion. Interesting, if they only play one of the Darling Tolian Cobra, that's nice that they can shuffle it back so they're able to summon it back out. Going to add a copy of Saracenian, which is basically a battle fader, I believe, that also allows you to search. Going to go ahead and activate 
Ambulolint <laughs> to add a copy of Preda Planning or Preda Practice, rather. Going to go summon out the Sarsisian. Going to go Bufalika. So this allows them to actually use that to search, I believe. Go into the Climidia Sundew. This is basically full, full combo. They add Preda Planning as well. So this is mega full combo for their deck. Going to go into the Drago Stapelia here. Going to activate the Bufalika to fuse again. Going into, wow, the Starving Venom, Preda Power, Fusion Dragon. So this is essentially a Omni Negate. That is basically a failsafe against a lot of stuff, including evenly matched. Gonna go ahead and also set a copy of Brand of Banishment. So they have Banishment as a negate. They have the Starving Venom as a negate. They have the Preda Plant, Drago Stapelia as a negate. And then they have the Preda Planning as well, which allows them to send and then put counters and then automatically Drago Stapelia would negate. So that's four. Plus the Super Poly, which is five basically disruptions. It's pretty nuts if you think about it. And we are actually gonna somehow play through this. So we're gonna go ahead and Enter our main phase. Going to go ahead and actually activate the effect of Cornfield Quado, just seeing if they can bait out an Ash. Potentially could have also just played Pressure Planet to think that they're to make them think that we're playing Cash, but that's all right. We're going to go ahead and add Big Wing Burfamet. The reasoning because we already have Mirror Sword Knight, so in the case that um, they Ash this, we still have the Big Wing Burfamet with the Chimera Fusion, right? So. Gonna go ahead and add a copy of Fenrir, which I think is a lot better into boards than Unicorn, because it essentially forces them to bait this out and get it off the board, or else if they use any monster effects on the crackback, we can try and banish something. So they're gonna go ahead and put a counter on Fenrir, negate. Uh, we're gonna chain Book of Moon here. Potentially, we could have also just chained Book of Moon to bait something out, but I think it's better to play into it. Gonna hold the Chimera Fusion. I think it's a little bit better to just use that on the follow-up. Just use this book now, because this deals with the Preda Planning as well. Obviously, so it's really, really nice interaction there. This is going to go through. We're going to go ahead and add a copy of Unicorn. And then, because he activated Monster Effect, and because this is no longer negated, we can use the effect of Fenrir. So this is what I mean. It's really good on the boards. And then he's going to tribute off Fenrir because it has a Preda counter. So you can tribute a monster with a Preda counter to negate that activation, which is quite nice. But that clears the table for us to summon the Unicorn. So now he's kind of like, already he's feeling pressure from the Cash Tier cards alone, plus one non-engine. So you can kind of see how the Cash Tier cards really mesh well with this type of strategy. And then he's going to go ahead and activate the effect of Preda planning, sending his cost. And he's going to chain the effect of the Preda ban branded banishment as chaining two, just going off to fuse, I, I would imagine, I think it was into a second uh, Drago Stapelia here, and then that Preda Planning would get some value. So let's see what he does. Go ahead and target Swabellion. Gonna fuse those two darks into, yep, another copy of Drago Stapelia. So on the chain that resolves, Preda Planning will put a counter, and then Unicorn resolves negated. He's gonna be able to use the effect to search off of the Biblisp, which is fine, just getting some follow-up there. But you can see that the board has already been basically desecrated. We've basically gotten rid of three interrupts, uh, four interrupts off of one Kastira card and one Book of Moon. So we're like up two interrupts, which is insane. Using a normal summon for the Mirror Sword, if it gets Ash, that's fine. We still have Chimera Fusion, but he obviously does not have the Ash. So we're going to summon out the Big Wing Burfamet and try to use the effect to add here. Obviously locking us into Fusions, but that's fine. We don't really need to go into XYZs here to win. He, even if he chains, we have the effect of Chimera Fusion, which is a blowout here. Gonna Potentially, we could also go into a Guardian Chimera, but I think I saw that we had a line potentially go for a game here. So we're just going to go ahead and go off. But he's going to chain the Super Poly here uh, to prevent that Guardian Chimera play from resolving, I'd imagine, for, uh, forcing us to use Unicorn if that was the case. Going to use the two Darks there to go off into a Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, which we don't really care about. And then we're going to go ahead and resolve that. So we're going to fuse out a copy of Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts, trying to go for the game push because Chimera Fusion can be returned to our hand. And we're also resolving the effect of Burfamet as well to add another copy of Gazelle and Chimera Fusion to our hand. Then we're going to use the effects in the graveyard because these guys actually have graveyard effects. I know it's nuts, but Gazelle is going to allow us to search an illusion. And then Big Wing Burfamet is going to allow us to reborn an illusion so we can use an effect, and then we're gonna, as padding, use the effect of King Chimera, the Phantom Beast, to chain block that, so no funny business from Ghost Spell or whatever. And then we're gonna bring back the Cornfield Quado. We're gonna be able to search another copy of Mirror Sword Knight. Gonna use the effect of Cashier Unicorn now that it's no longer negated on the resolution of a Starving Venom Fusion Dragon to gain attack, so we can rip his Mirror Jade from his extra deck. And then after that is processed and resolved. We're going to use the effect of Chimera Fusion to add it back just for added measure. Why not? We're going to have a copy on his turn to make Garden Chimera if he does somehow survive this onslaught. Using the two illusions plus the Chimera, the Phantom Beast King, which is treated as Chimera, the King, the Flying Mythical Beast to go into the Illusion Beast. And this is just game. We attack into the Starving Venom, take some damage, use the effect to make it zero. It doesn't die by battle. Going to attack two more times to swing over 3,100 plus, I believe, 200 for every card powered up by Rathos. And then the Unicorn Swing will be over 8k. So a lot of damage there. 
Now, in the game two, you can see we kind of brick a little bit here, obviously adding. It's not really a brick because we still have Cornfield Quado as a one card starter. Uh, so it's a decent hand, but the cast here of birth is not really ideal here. Still keeping a nib because I think nib is quite good against the Predaplant deck. He's going to go standard full combo here. And there's actually a moment here where you can catch them off guard with nib before they fuse off into the Starving Venom Preda Power Dragon. So they're not able to negate. And we actually do exactly that. So they're going to go off into the Melanomizer Strike just padding against Ash Blossom. Normally, if we didn't have the nib, this would probably be very hard to get rid of. Although Dark Hole might have helped a little bit. We're going to nib right here in response to Bufalika where he's trying to make uh, Starving Venom Pred of Power, and this is just crazy because he loses his whole entire board to this one little rock character. And from here, we're going to see him set a Banishment as his only protection in addition to the Pred of Planning. So he does have some plays here. And then obviously we have the Heavy's Feather Duster and we have the Gazelle here as padding. We could have just went Cornfield Coado to search the Mirror Sword Knight, but I figured it was probably better to play around Ash Blossom because if the Mirror Sword got ashed, we'd have to pass our turn. Whereas here, we could still go Gazelle and try and make a play, right? If the Gazelle gets ashed, we still have the follow-up with the Big Wing Perfumet on the following turn. Go ahead and activate Harpish Feather Duster. Although in hindsight, maybe just going into Mirror Sword Knight was a little better because I realized if Gazelle gets ashed, we can't really do anything with Perfumet anyways besides Tribute Summon it. So yeah, we could potentially have Tribute Summon in the, the uh, Perfumet over the Nib as well because it gets the effect on normal. So we're going to go Harpy. He's going to chain, get Dragos Topelia out, put counters on everything. And then he's going to resolve the effect of Biblis, which is going to allow him to add a Preda Plant. And then from here, we can just really just freely activate the Dark Hole. And our opponent just probably sees writing on the wall. Yeah, because we already have any of these starters basically full combo. So, yeah, I just want to show you guys the full power of this deck. If you guys have any suggestions, definitely test it out. Let me know how good it is because I really love how the Chimera engine is just like an insane engine that went unchecked, allows you to have a crazy startup as well as a grind game. And then the cast tier cards went unchecked, obviously take over the game on themselves as well. So definitely let me know what you think. If you haven't subscribed already, definitely do so below so I can continue making videos like this. And other than that, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.